Dick Vitale. Hey, make sure you listen, man, to Locked On Blue Devils with J.J. Jackson. He's awesome, baby. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another edition of the Lockdown Blue Devils podcast. So great to have you here with us on this Monday, exciting edition of Lockdown Blue Devils. My name is JJ Jackson. I proudly serve as the host of the program. Follow me on Twitter at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore. Follow the show on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils. Be sure to follow and subscribe this podcast for free wherever you get them, and you'll be able to get the latest edition of Lockdown Blue Devils each and every day when it comes out. Like us on YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel, share the video with your friend. It's awesome being able to make us your first watch, first listen every single day. On today's show, I now welcome in my good friend Josh Cox of Duke Football Talks Section 17 Podcast. We're going to do a little Mailbag Monday edition of the program. Josh, appreciate the time. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. I'm looking forward to this. And For the record, for the listeners and watchers, I have not seeing any of these questions ahead of time. So this ought to be a lot of fun. This this is the best way to do it. This is actually only the second time ever, I believe. I have done it once before about a year ago, but the second time ever that I've done Mailbag Monday with a co-host. And so, uh, Josh, you fit the perfect description of what I'm looking for in a co-host. I kind of want to go back and forth on some of these questions. So let's just dive right in. People sent questions on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils. Or we always promote the email as well, LockdownBlueDevils at gmail.com. So I actually got this message uh, sent via email from uh, someone named Felix. And Felix asked, after the NBA draft lottery, where is a better fit for Paulo Bancaro, the Orlando Magic, Oklahoma City Thunder, or Houston Rockets? Those three teams obviously in consecutive order, one, two, three after the lottery. Wow, that's really funny. Uh, interesting. I was actually just before we got on tonight, I was just uh, scrolling through Twitter and uh, and seeing some people comment um, underneath Paulo's tweets and and different things like that. Um, I the more I think about it, the more I really do think Orlando's going to go with Chet. Um, I really I really feel like that's the way they're going to uh, just 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 what they're looking for as a team. Um, I would like to see um, Paulo go to. Oklahoma City personally, um, because I'd like to see Oklahoma City also land somebody uh, with all those picks. I think they have like four first round picks or something crazy. Yeah. Um, uh, like they can use some of those picks and uh, from the the lower picks and maybe uh, get a high profile guy. Um, so I'd like to see that, but I think the most logical landing spot is I believe he's gonna land third um, there in Houston. And honestly, I'm I'm not mad about that. I mean, they got a nice little young core, um, and I think he would fit. I mean, they don't. You're talking about freedom. He'd have freedom. Um, he would be able to hone his skills. Um, he would be able to have the ball in his hand. Um, you know, he wouldn't be playing behind anybody per se. And so I'm completely comfortable with a fit there for him in Houston. Jalen Green is so versatile. He's so bouncy. He's an electrifying player that uh, talks a good bit of, uh, of trash and uh, is a highly motivated basketball player out there on the floor. And I think the excitement of him and Paulo being together – uh, would be awesome. So talking about fit, I think it's always kind of difficult to dictate that when you are a top three pick in the NBA draft because, look, that means you're going to a really bad team. Like, these teams are really bad. And so in terms of the perfect fit, I think you're going to walk into a situation, regardless of these three teams, where a lot is going to be put on your shoulders right out of the gates. And so of these three teams, honestly, I don't see much differentiation in those landing spots for him. Yeah, and if I may say this, fit is a great word. And we have to see where Paulo Bencaro is going to fit in the NBA, in the modern yeah. NBA anyway, if we're if we're very honest, right? So um, he, he is your prototypical four, um, you know, traditional basketball-wise. But that, that doesn't really exist uh, much anymore in the NBA. And so I believe Paulo is really going to have to <clears throat> hone in on his perimeter skills, uh, get a little quicker. Um, he's strong as an ox. We know that. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, it's going to be his fit overall in the league 
is going to be interesting. I think we're going to look back three, four years from now, and we'll probably see a different player. I'm not sure which way he'll go, but I think we're going to see a different player, an improved player, but a different player, and a skill set's going to kind of evolve, um, I believe, especially, like it's a 6'10", 250. Uh, it's just a tough uh, – that sounds odd, right? That sounds yeah. so weird to say, but 6'10", 250, he's got to kind of figure out what kind of guy he's going to be. All right, and that was Felix sending us a question. Ryan sent a question on Twitter. Where do you think that Joey Baker will transfer? Big news at the end of uh, last week. Had Brendan Marks of The Athletic on the show, recorded a conversation with him before that news broke. Uh, Busting Brackets put out a list of eight potential destinations for Joey Baker. Auburn, Gonzaga, Louisville, Michigan State, Pitt, Purdue, Seton Hall, St. John's. Not a whole lot of speculation, just a good list of potential teams. I have no idea where Joey Baker is going to fit, but I'm genuinely curious on what that team is. Yeah, I mean, the only uh, social media stalking, right? Um, he was with Cassius Stanley out in Los Angeles uh, this past week. And so, I mean, I, the whole football program transferred to UCLA. So I was kind of wondering if, uh, if, if he was following uh, some of his buddies out there. Uh, but obviously that – UCLA didn't make that list. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, Joey's from Fayetteville. In fact, I believe he's from all over the place. Technically, I think his dad was in the military, of course, and stuff. So, uh, But Fayetteville's kind of his hometown. Um, I, you know, I don't think he'll stay anywhere local. Um, you know, I, I would like to see the same trajectory for him because we, we like these guys, right? It's, we love Duke, but we love these players. And, you know, Alex O'Connell um, – he, he improved. I mean, he went to Creighton and became a better ball player. And this past season, he was a very, very important piece of the puzzle there. And so I'd like to see him go somewhere where he really could be uh, not only developed as a better player, but still make the NCAA tournament and play, you know, meaningful basketball um, in, in March and April. That was a question from Ryan. Where do you think that Joey Baker will transfer? It's a Mailbag Monday edition of Locked On Blue Devils. Let's answer some more questions here in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils is brought to you by our friends over at Built Bar. Built Bar is incredible. You've got to try it out. They've got a new flavor. It's their brownie batter puffs. It's the perfect pick-me-up for any day. 140 calories, 17 grams of protein, and only 7 grams of sugar. Make this a part of your daily diet. All Built Puffs are covered in 100% real chocolate. That means with Built, you can eat healthy and actually enjoy doing it. And they're made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides a ton of healthy benefits. The brownie batter puffs will have you completely forgetting that you're eating a protein bar. No need to pinch yourself. This is real life. Go to Built.com to get brownie batter puffs now. And go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Welcome back into another edition of the Lockdown Blue Devils podcast. J.J. Jackson hanging out with my buddy here, Josh Cox, from Duke Football Talks Section 17 podcast. All right, Mailbag Monday, let's keep it moving. Uh, I got a question on Twitter from an account, Devil in the Blue Dress. Devil in a blue dress, good right. name there, uh, sent us a question and asked, who is your favorite current Duke player in the NBA? Your favorite current Duke player <laughs> in the NBA. I can't pick one, Josh, right? I mean, for me, I'm thinking Zion Williamson, who hasn't played in forever, but I love him so much. Grayson Allen was always a favorite. Jason Tatum, Kyrie. I mean, it's just so hard to pick one. Yeah, I mean, well, the the easy answer retired for me last year. It was JJ Reddick for so many years, and uh, I mean, you know this. My my uh, my love for JJ Reddick knows no bounds. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a huge JJ Reddick fan. Um, but uh, man, I, okay. So the obvious pick is Jason Tatum for me. That that's the obvious pick. Um, I love his game. He is a top five. Uh, okay, let's just say he's a top five to ten. Uh, player in the league, depending on what game you watch him in the playoffs. He either looks like Kobe Bryant or he looks like he's never seen a basketball. So, anyway, the, when he looks like Kobe Bryant, he's a top five player in the league. Um, Boston is building their franchise around him. Um, and <clears throat> I mentioned Kobe. He reminds me of Kobe Bryant, the the shots that he can make. So, he's the obvious one. I, 
Let me go obscure. I would say okay. my, my more obscure answer, um, I'm going to say Luke Kennard. I would, that was going to be mine, and I love of course Kennard. you take it. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Led the, led the league in three-point shoot percentage, shooting percentage for the Clippers. Um, once again, another guy from Duke that can be a defensive liability but keeps himself on the court because he can shoot so dang well. And so uh, that's my that's my kind of my my not so obvious pick. Yeah, as a lefty myself, I love the left-handed jump shot from Luke Kennard. That has always been something beautiful to watch. Uh, you and I just like shooters, right? So uh, yeah, our our guy Seth Curry, Gar- to be Gary the Trent, most. Seth Gary Curry Trent Jr. Oh yeah. my gosh, yes. Yeah. We uh, you, you, we're blessed. You know what, what? I just need to put this out here into the universe, right? Into the into the the webosphere. Um, Luke Kennard came back for his sophomore season at Duke after shooting roughly 30%, Mr. Kills, uh, from three his freshman season. And he came back to Duke for his sophomore season, and he and he absolutely exploded. And he should have won ACC Player of the Year. Um, I'm just throwing that out there. That's all I will say. The, the numbers are eerily similar. Perfect. We're doing all the Trevor Kills recruiting pitches that we can. That's awesome. That was yep. a question from Devil in a Blue Dress. I like that one. That was a good yep. one. Uh, Valerie sent a question, and this was on an email uh, earlier today, actually, locked on Blue Devils at gmail.com. First thing Monday morning, what are Duke's chances this weekend versus UCLA and the NCAA softball Super Regionals? I'll take this one. I've covered softball for so many years uh, at the SEC Network and ACC Network level. Got to cover and announce play-by-play for a Duke and Georgia Tech softball game this season on the ACC Network Extra. I'll say this in terms of chances. Uh, Duke is not going to be favored in a three-game weekend series versus UCLA. It's one of the most historic programs of all time. They've got the most national championships in softball of all time. All the legends in the sport uh, probably played at UCLA in one day and age. And this is still just the fifth or sixth season of Duke softball. The fact that they were able to come back and win the Durham Regional like they were this past weekend over Georgia was outstanding. Really good senior pitcher in Peyton St. George. And then Jamison Cavell and Christina Foreman are going to be the girls to watch in the lineup offensively for Duke. And, and Josh, I'll just let you have that comment there. How amazing is it that in just the fifth year of a program, you're going to the Super Regionals. All you have to do is win two out of three games in a series, and you get to go to the Women's College World Series. Yeah, I, and that's all I can say. I don't know much more about Duke uh, women's uh, softball. And I, need, I need to get over. They have a beautiful facility there on East yeah, Campus. Yeah. Um, and I need to get over there uh, to a game next season. But, yeah, I mean, how incredible that they won uh, the tie-breaking game this weekend uh, and, and, and heading out to play UCLA. That's pretty awesome. I believe I saw something where uh, Duke was uh, – UCLA is about the third or fourth ranked team in the country, I believe, or something like that. And Duke was 12, so, something like that. So five versus 12, yes. Five versus 12. Hey, there we go. Men's basketball. There's always a 5-12 upset, so let's do it. <laughs> let's make it happen indeed. I like it. I like the optimism there. All right, that was another good question from uh, Valerie. Appreciate you writing in with that one. Got a few more questions that we'll answer on the other side of this final break on this Monday edition of Locked on Blue Devils. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing number of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning that you might not know the answer to about your car while the person behind the counter orders parts on their computer when you could be doing this all by yourself and getting a great deal, saving time and money when using Rock Auto. Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Their prices are reliably low for every customer. They have everything you can need from brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right, Locked On Blue Devils in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com. Final segment here today of Locked On Blue Devils, J.J. Jackson hanging out with Josh Cox from Duke Football Talks Section 17 podcast. On this Monday, if people are listening to you for the first time, Josh, give us a plug for the podcast and what you guys do. Yeah, Section 17 podcast um, started in our third season, and we cover exclusively Duke football. 
And so a little bit different here than the Locked On Blue Devils podcast where J.J. covers a wide variety of Duke, Duke athletics. Uh, we focus in on football during the season about once uh, well, once a week, for sure, in the season starting in August uh, with some preseason pods. And we're got, we've got some off-season plans as well. Shout out an email. Shot for the stars today. Uh, shot Put out an email requesting an interview, and uh, we'll see if we land it or not. But, um, yeah, it's really – we try to give you good, honest feedback. We're a fan-forward podcast. Um, and and the Twitter handle you can find us at is at Duke FB Talk. So at Duke FB Talk, and we would love to interact with you. Thanks, JJ, for having us on, man. We love yeah. we love talking football on our podcast, as you know. I enjoy talking anything sports with you, man. I enjoy it. Yeah, you're on the show once a week for a reason. You give great takes. You're always so great with your time. It's easy to communicate with you, Josh, and I'm always so grateful for that. So let's wrap up Mailbag Monday here. A couple of more questions. Got one from Ned here, email LockedOnBlueDevils at gmail.com. Send us a message. Are you surprised with how elite Duke has continued to be recruiting-wise in basketball for these next couple of classes? Are you surprised? Pretty simple question, Josh. Um, <clears throat> I I want to say that I'm not surprised at all, but but I have to be honest. I, I, I kind of thought that, while John Shire was obviously a talented recruiter and while he obviously connected with players like Jason Tatum and like Zion Williamson and, and, and like, you know, others, Paulo Bencaro, um, I, I always kind of had it in the back of my head that a guy like John Shire would walk into a living room and he would meet a family and he would make a good impression. But then 30 minutes in, there'd be a knock at the door and in the room stepping Mike Krzyzewski, right? So at the end of the day, like that's what I always pictured and I always envisioned. Um, and so I did think that we would go through a little bit um, of a lull and um, it, it it's not happening. Uh, there is no recruiting lull. There may be a little bit of a, a change in philosophy. I believe uh, Coach Shire um, has a little bit of a different vision for the type of player that he wants to bring to Durham. Um, and I'm completely comfortable with that. Um, so, yeah, my, my answer was I was expecting it to, and it hasn't. I mean, for the next two seasons, it looks like we're going to be, you know, the number one recruiting class in the country. And so, I mean, kudos to him. It puts a little bit of pressure on him as a coach, uh, for sure. But uh, but that's that's my opinion, personally, just being honest. Yeah, it's like it's it's two different ways to look at this question, I think. You can look at it with your Duke glasses on or just from the outside looking in. As a basketball fan, we've seen legends in the sport walk away from their schools and someone take over and not be able to recruit at the level Shire is right out of the gate. So from that perspective, absolutely, I think you have to be surprised with how great Duke has been recruiting-wise. But knowing the Duke program like we do, knowing John Shire's success out on the recruiting trails over the years, I don't think you're as surprised if that kind of makes sense. I think – uh. There's a couple of different ways to look at that. So uh, another question here, Duke Hoops Forever, an account on uh, Twitter. I like that one. Uh, What is a good over-under for how many seasons until John Shire makes his first Final Four as Duke men's basketball head coach? This is fun. Well. He's not asking. He didn't give us a number. Like, I guess Duke Hoops Forever wants us to set set the number. I'm going to set it at one and a half years because – uh, I really wow. think he's going to make the Final Four that second season, and here's why. He's building the foundation this year, and then that class, that that 2020, what would that be, 2020, 2023? That class, ooh. Yeah. Um, I I think that's the one. I mean, you've got a stud point guard in Caleb Foster, if he doesn't reclassify, um, coming in with that class and leading that class. Um, uh, McKenzie and Bach. I, I'm missing yep. that last name, up, but you know what I'm talking about McKenzie. Um, I mean, just, anyway, I'm not going to start trying to start naming all these guys. I mean, Jerry um, McCain, Sean Stewart, like the Sean class Stewart, is incredible. Yeah. It's an it's, incredible it class. And so, I'm just going to throw it out there. I'm going to put the over under at one and a half years, and I'm going to take the over. Tyrese Proctor is the other one, the Australian that's kid right. that's coming over. That's a, a really good player. So, um, I don't. What do you think? One, one and a half is what I'm trying to think of what number to set it at first. I don't know. I mean. I mean, can we can we say two. this? I know it's a curse word, but didn't uh, a guy over in Chapel Hill do it uh, in his first year? Absolutely, yeah, kind of set a standard there, man. And I'm not saying that John has got to do that in his first season. I'm just saying 
that there is no five-year plan for Duke, right? Duke is, and maybe that is, maybe that's the most incredible thing about Mike Krzyzewski is that it was him, but he created this program and this system where he leaves it and the expectation stays the same. Yeah. And that's pretty incredible. That's that's leadership right there. I think, I think the more I think about it, I I think we got to go more towards that one and a half number like you're saying, in terms of a good number to set it at. And here's why. You mentioned the recruiting classes that Duke has. Oftentimes, when you look at a new coach coming in, like we've said, you want them to have a couple of time to get their guys into a program, to build, to have chemistry, develop, and that sort of thing. One, John Shire has been there. And two, it doesn't really matter the chemistry element in a way because they're bringing in new players every single season. One, in this day and age of college basketball. And two, because Duke has turned into a one and done factory. So yeah. I think I, I think you can't push that number further back because there are going to be greater expectations with these great teams that you're putting together. So yeah, I, I think one and a half probably would be a good number because you're tempted to say, okay, two could be that number, or does he do the Hubert Davis deal and go for it in his first season here? Yeah, and and, and a lot remains to be seen, right? Uh, for what yeah. happens this fall, even who uh, who's on the roster, right? Uh, this this fall. I mean, you look at the fact that this year we're only bringing back two scholars, <clears throat> two legitimate recruited scholarship players um, on our roster, um, and, and and Jeremy Roach and Jalen Blakes. Um, I, I I would assume that John Shire's goal is for that not to be the case every year, um, but. It is kind of becoming the landscape of college basketball. And the years of a guy coming in and a class kind of staying together and growing together over a couple of seasons, that's just not there. They're showing up on campus in the summer, and in October they're they're hitting hard with practice, and in November they're playing basketball together. And they're supposed to become a well-oiled machine by March. And so it's that cycle every season. Josh, what did you think of your first trip to uh, to Mailbag Monday here on Lockdown Blue Devils? Oh, I enjoyed it. I, I encourage more people. I'm gonna I'm gonna like send myself a question uh, next time. Like you know, <laughs> I'm gonna set myself up with a with an easy one. But, uh, it was really good, man. I I enjoyed that for sure. Awesome, man. Thanks for being on the show here, and we'll see you again sometime soon. Okay. Thanks, JJ. All right, that's Josh Cox, my buddy from Duke Football Talks Section 17 podcast. Joining us here on a Monday edition of the program. Any questions you have, I could pile them over several weeks. We don't do this every single week. It could kind of get repetitive after a while. So I've got a lot of questions that we could still pull out over the summer. Send us an email, lockdownbluedevils at gmail.com, or send us a tweet at LO underscore Blue Devils. Thanks so much for listening. That's going to do it for another episode of the podcast. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you tomorrow. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.